My name is Ron. And my name is LaShawn. Welcome back to the Three Minute Marriage Moment. Well, we're going to pick up from last week. It was a hot topic, so I think we're going to continue on. <laughs> right. Last week, if you remember, we talked about can my marriage be saved. Um, I think it was a gentleman that called in and said that his um, spouse had left and he wanted to know if he could save his marriage still. And this week, we wanted to share another aspect of that and that your marriage can be saved. It's a great possibility. But what things you need to consider when trying to attempt to save your marriage and repair it. Yep. And we just don't want to say that the guys are also women too. You know, that's wondering if their marriage is because some women get tired saying, I can't take it no more. I can't do this no more. But we're going to give you a few keys and a few pointers on what to do. I know last week I signed a little hard on the guys, but it's the truth. Don't be a punk. You know, we got to stand up and fight for our marriages. I mean, when you fight, if you could fight for everything else, that's outside of your home. Why can't you fight for your wife? I agree. <laughs> or why can't your wife fight for you? You know, we wanted everything so easy, put mm -hmm. on the platter before mm -hmm. us. And it don't work like that. You know, God never designed for us to have one of those walkthrough marriages. You know, but yeah. he wanted us to have a marriage that we have to work on. It's like a job. I'm right. sorry, I hate to say it, but it's like a job. You're going to have to put time into it and you're going to have to work it. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to have to put time, money and effort into it. Mm. And one of the things that we wanted to share today, you know, we were talking earlier about having humility. Um, yes. It's easy to point the finger at the other person and to pick out somebody else's faults and to list them one by one and know how, you know, saying things like, I know my wife, I know my husband, mm. but have you ever, and there was an old saying, you know, have you ever tried to walk a mile in my shoes? And it's really about humility and empathy and there we are finding that there are more and more people, not just couples, who have a challenge with being empathetic, not sympathy, being able to feel it for or see a situation from somebody else's perspective instead of just their own. Right. I mean, they don't want to walk, you know, in somebody else's boots, seeing what they see, but they just want to see their own selfishness. You know, that's just bottom line. They're just selfish, babe. I mean, in a relationship, why don't you ever want to help a person or see the way they see? You know, and I'm not saying be like them. No, not no. at all. But you got to, you got to have some empathy with them. You got to. I mean, it's just like a must. You know, I mean, I don't understand. I'm still trying to figure out myself why people get like that. Why do you think that? Well, I think people, our culture has just really perpetuated a, a self-centered type mentality that it's all about me and I can do me and you do you, I'll do me. You know, you're the cause of all of my woes and everything. But I think it's really important. I think God really helped me. I remember... When I was complaining about my husband, you know, and I wasn't li really in his corner wanting him to live for very long because I was hurt and disappointed. You, you heard the story. But um, one of the things that the Lord told me that really kind of shocked me, he asked me a question. He said, is Ryan my son? And I said, yep, yep, he your son. You know, God, do something about him. And then God told me this. He said, do you really think that I love you more than I love him? And that kind of stopped me in my tracks and it made me look at my marriage from a different perspective because, you know, I'm thinking, okay, God, I'm a princess. I'm your daughter. Do something with him. Blah, 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 blah. I don't have to stand for this. You didn't create me for this. And God just simply, you really think I love you more than I love him? That's my son. I will deal with him. You need to just step back, shut your mouth and let me do it. And when I obey God, instead of fighting him and try to help him, my marriage started to turn around quickly quicker i had tried everything that i knew how to try temper tantrums manipulation withholding sex fighting even cussing you know all of that kind of stuff trying to stay in control and nothing worked but when i stepped back shut my mouth began to pray for my husband and then see life from his eyes how it must feel being a man and out of work how it must feel like you can't even pick your daughter up because you have a back injury God began to soften my heart and I began to get empathy and compassion. And it humbled me because, yeah, it humbled me. Yeah. And even from a man's perspective, which is the truth, you know, when she began to pray for me, that's what changed. She could talk all day, say all that type of stuff. You need to do this. You no good. You sorry. Yeah, I can't accept your sorry. But when she prayed for me for real, for real, it changed me. And she didn't pray, say, God, change it. But she said, Lord, change me first. Yeah. And when she said that, it changed me. 
So we're just going to cut it off right here, and we're going to pick up again mm, from here. Yeah, we might have to do another week of this. Yeah, yeah, because this is getting good. But thank you. Be sure to stay in contact with us, songsofsolomonri.com. Or on Facebook at Songs of Solomon Relationship Institute. Click on like or join Songs of Solomon, and we will see you later. Have a blessed day. Peace out. Peace.